Do you want me to like run out and then yes. I can run in? <laughs> this is Christopher Mills. So he's our go-to guy for everything camera involved, photography, and mm -hmm. he's done some amazing things for the town. And uh, you can catch postcards at the co-op and at the chamber, yep. and you know he does some great stuff. So he's here to tell you how to keep things safe, and he's going to keep it simple, right? We're going to try to keep it simple and not confuse you with camera settings. Hopefully, that's. Yep, and he's got one too. Okay, perfect. So, first rule of photography usually is you do not point your camera in the direction of the sun, except for on eclipse day, as long as you have a proper filter to do it with. It has to be certified, UV protectant, and infrared. This is a 16 stop filter, you can't even look through it. So, this will not damage your sensor. If you put it on, if you go on, uh, I think YouTube, Sean McDonald has sacrificed a cannon, I think, <laughs> at 400 millimeters, and it was seconds, wasn't it? And it was smoke was rolling out of it, pointed at the sun at 400 millimeter. So it is definitely not a safe thing to do. So definitely wear a filter and have glasses, and I won't get too involved in camera settings. So this filter is just going to screw on the front, and then you can, whoop, maybe it'll go in. And then it'll safely be able to point this at the sun for a pretty long period of time. What I'm going to do, I'll walk you through my, uh, my little motions here of what I'm going to do during the eclipse. Once we get into first contact, when the sun, like 223, when it just starts to take, the moon takes a little bite out of the sun, I'll have a lens cap on, take it off, camera will be pointed at the sun. And what I'll do is take an exposure probably pre-focus before we get there and switch to manual focus on the camera. So if you guys got any DSLRs, you can do the same thing. Focus and even use a little piece of tape and keep your focus ring steady where it is so you bump it, do anything like that, nothing will change. And we'll take a picture of the sun and then put the lens cap back on just in case the sun's going to Keep putting some heat in there, and you don't want to fry nothing down. And probably somewhere around, if we do an f-stop of f8, you can probably use a shutter speed of around 1 800th of a second. Should expose pretty decent for, the, uh, for those shots, and nothing will change from there, clear to totality. And when we get to totality, things will change quite a lot then, because uh, the light's not going to be there. But every, if you want one of those, like Pac-Man, uh, pictures where it's the moon's eating parts of the sun. Take a shot every five minutes, and it doesn't have to be exact. You can do 440, you can do 520, it doesn't matter. But take the lens cap off, pop a shot, put it back on, wait, bring a chair with you. And if you have it, a tall tripod, this one will go up higher so that you're not scooched down like this and hurting your back every five minutes. So set it up where you get a chair. And relax and enjoy it, because there's going to be a lot of people around, and bring some water. But they, every five minutes, get a little shot, and you'll get that composite later that you can put into where there's a perfect sun disk, and then you'll get the parts where it's eating it down. Once we get into totality, where we're going to get to Bailey's beads, a diamond ring, and all that cool stuff, we're probably going to drop the shutter speed down. And then what we're going to do is shoot what they call a bracket exposure. You can set these cameras up now, any DSLR, where you can come around the back, and I have a function on this one programmed that I can shoot a nine frames right in a row, one stop of light apart. So that means it's going to expose the camera automatically for the highlights, and it's going to expose them completely for the shadows. So then you can, once you set this up to, to roll on that, if you use an interval velometer, you do not have to touch the camera at all. You'll get no vibration know anything and you can can I get one of those on my phone? You can. <laughs> Your camera will probably do it in burst mode, your phone. Yeah. So then once you hold that down, that will take nine shots, all one stop apart, and that should cover a nine exposure blend. Just like that. That'll shoot nine shots, one right after the other, one stop apart, from way under to way over. So you should be able to capture Bailey's beads with that, I think, and you should be able to get the, uh, the diamond ring pretty easily. One of those exposures has got to hit. <laughs> and the problem with when that's happening, it's happening so fast that it's going to 
going to probably be hard to keep changing shutter speed to capture it. Whereas if you just bring your shutter down to one two thousandths of a second at f11, make sure everything's good and sharp, and then you'll have enough dynamic range. You should be able to, to capture a pretty good uh, exposure of that somewhere in them nine brackets. So that's where you get a little bit confusing when we get into that stuff because it, it all happens so fast that you got to kind of be quick about it and hold her down and take your shots to get them all in. But one of those should come out pretty decent and then once we get into totality you can uh, do the same thing. Kind of bracket your shots and get all that chromosphere that's shooting up but definitely if you're going to photograph the thing take a minute. We got three minutes 20 seconds. Step back from the camera. Take your Take your glasses off. When you get to totality, you can take the filter back off your camera and step back and, and literally enjoy it because it's a once in a lifetime thing for a lot of us to see this and it's coming right straight over our hometown and you can't get any, any better front row seats to it than this without you know traveling somewhere and it's gonna be really, really cool. So definitely step back from the cameras, take a little bit of time to enjoy it yourself and then once we start into, into the uh, Bailey's beads again and the diamond ring, filters back on, glasses back on, roll through your the bracket thing, all the DSLRs will do it, digital cameras, and then once we start back you can get the Pac-Man going the other way, clear to I think 441 maybe is last contact, contact four, and then so you can get your whole Pac-Man coming down and going up and then hopefully with any luck at all we can get some uh, the diamond the diamond ring and, and yeah. <laughs> the other the other thing is is if anybody does not have it and this is like our first one to do it and even like somebody like me has never been on one of these things before uh, I'm going by a lot of uh, like big photography guys that I follow and are friends with out in the West Coast and Texas and all this stuff that has done this before these are some pretty close settings on on what to do and they always say your first one skip it because you're gonna be just wowed by what you're gonna see once totality gets here. It's pretty amazing experience. I mean, you, the moon shadow coming at us is 2,800 miles an hour, and you know, the sky's gonna get all black in the west, and because that shadow's coming, and it's, a, it's quite a moving experience to do it. So that's where hustling around in practice, you can, pra I've been taking photos of the sun and getting all the sunspots on it, and I kind of hope that maybe one of them's gonna shoot us a solar flare where we're gonna get some northern lights, and, and uh, you can watch this stuff, but it's, uh, you can practice up, up until the event. If you do have a DSLR, get yourself a, a filter and, uh, and keep trying. Because once you get there for the day, stuff kind of starts happening rapid and it's good to have the practice in so that you can have it down. And the other thing to take in consideration, the longer zoom you're gonna use to shoot this thing, that sun's gonna travel through that viewfinder in a hurry. Like I think I timed it out with a video when I had the sun dead center of my frame. I think it was a little less than two minutes at 600 millimeter, it wasn't in the frame at all. So if you're gonna take a shot every five minutes, recompose your camera, get it in the center, take your shot, and then wait five minutes, recompose it, and then take another one. And that's where it helps to have your tape on your focus ring, set up manual focus, and uh, saves a lot of time you know, in between. So that'll get you all your all your shots pretty good. I do have a, a PDF file that I made that shows the camera settings to use if anybody has a DSLR or whatever. If you know somebody that is gonna try to capture this thing, it has the settings and the f-stops for each contact point and they can go right on my website and print it off and they can have it if you know somebody that is gonna bring it. So what are you gonna do after you get all done and find out if you to take the cover off? Then you're gonna be like, eh, it's rough, it's rough, yep, yep. It's a one-time deal, this is what you got, yeah. You have to, yep, you laugh. I've done it out shooting the Milky Way before and uh, yeah, yeah I've, taken, I've taken three or four exposures, thought I had everything down and then had scared to death with a moose that was breathing down my neck and I don't know who was more freaked out, me or the moose, and figured it out and got the camera back to the truck. I'm like, well, I hope they got the shot and the lens cap was still on it. <laughs> so it was, we had to toughen up and go back out and set it back up again and hopefully the moose left us alone, but it's... Um, um, you can. What I have, no. what I think, no. yeah. You say no. You're not. You're not going to get a good one. Uh, yeah. Well, they, they do have filters for for phones, and you're not going to get in really close 
with it. You're going to get, um, you know, it's just going to be a spec because it's going to be such a wide field of view. The best stuff that I can say to do with a cell phone is even if you bought a cheap little tripod, something to prop it up on, and you're around your friends and your family during the, during the eclipse, once you get to totality, put it in video mode, prop it up on a rock, a bag, whatever you got around you, and just set it down, and then everybody stand in front of it and watch it. Because you will capture a lot more in the video that would be a whole lot more memorable than like a little small dot on the photo that's taken, you know, 20 millimeter, whatever the lenses are in those 20 millimeter, 10 millimeter. Yeah, but the filter would be the thing. Yeah. You could, yeah. Yeah, you could burn your phone if you leave it there long enough. I'm not sure of the focal length on a cell phone. If you, you know, you held it, like I've taken pictures of the sun with my cell phone. I think you're back far enough. The, the, uh, the focal length isn't very close. So, it's, yeah, it's not going to, I don't think you're going to fry it like you would at 600 millimeter. You're going to fry that sensor in a hurry. Because you're going to burn it a bunch of the CCD Yeah, yeah. So you, you, could, you could definitely burn it out at any length of time, you know. So you could, but you could go up. I've done it though. So I just put my cell phone up, take a picture, and the sun's there. But it's a but it's a spell, and that's the other thing is let take your video and get videos of everybody and their reaction because you know this is a, a clear day, which is going to be we've we have we we have phone calls in on this, and we've done it. It is going to be a clear day. I have it requested, so it's better to shoot a video with everybody's reaction around you and you could post that to social media or do whatever and that would be a whole lot better memory of it than just a little small speck with a big lens flare this green coming down across it you would have a whole lot better memory of that and let there's going to be there's going to be thousands of us that are even way better than I am photographing this thing with uh, you know longer lenses telescopes all kinds of stuff that you can, you know, purchase a picture of uh, from one of them to have it. Because, you know, if you're here, Texas is still going to look the same as in the sky is what they're going to see. So you can get all kinds of really good pictures from, uh, from pretty good people that's going to take them with high dollar equipment, so to speak. Yeah, but, a, but a, uh, definitely a video, you know, with your friends and your family around, that would be pretty memorable to, to share because that's it's quite a thing. And the camera would expose a, hot, a lot better with a uh, video than it would... A, uh, a night shot type thing because some things they take three or four seconds sometimes when it's dark and it's going to get pretty dark yeah and cold the temperature is going to drop and so I'm going to try to do it with this and then we're going to set up a, uh, a wide angle I have another camera coming that I'm going to put a wide angle on to get the uh, to get Jupiter and Venus and uh, maybe Mars and Saturn down on the horizon I'm not sure if the glow is going to be bright too bright to see those two things, but we'll definitely see Venus and uh, Jupiter in there. And then coming down, we'll see uh, Betelgeuse and we'll also see uh, Cirrus down towards the uh, southwestern sky, the other bright star for sure. And then maybe if we get real lucky, we can uh, see some northern lights to the north if it's uh, dark enough and we get a ejection facing us a couple days prior. It could happen. Yep. And I'm still watching the comet too, the P Pons 12. We're still watching that. The, and if it, devil's, the devil's Comet, yeah. The Devil's Comet, yeah. <laughs> It's at a plus four, four and a half right now, I think, brightness, and we need a plus six to see it with the naked eye. So we'll see if it gets dark enough and the comet gets brightened. But that comet works like a volcano. It spews stuff out of it, some gases, and we're hoping maybe if it does, it will get really bright uh, before then. Yeah. Not far. Not far. No. Nope. Yeah, a couple degrees. Yep. And your, your fist, to know where the uh, sun is, quick trivia, your fist is about 10 degrees wide. So if you do this, the sun's going to be 35 and a half degrees up. So if you're standing in the square and you put your fist out, there's 10 degrees, and then go three times and a half, that's where it's going to be. So if you've got a building here, you're not going to see the sun. Or if you're out in a field and there's trees and your fist is below those trees, you want to be back farther or away from the trees to see it. So that's kind of a... That is the question that everyone is dying to know, and yeah, yeah, and I have, to be honest with you, I have no idea. I have all kinds of things that I would like to do, but I don't know. It's hard to be in one or you know several places all at once. I don't know. I would, I would like to get on a building in Market Square 
maybe the one up above Key Bank on that corner because if the square is full, the sun would be straight across and I could set up a time lapse with the other camera and let it run so you'd get the, uh, the dark to the light and you'd have all the people down in the square and you'd have all the photos to go with it and I could shoot the, the wide stuff from this one and see what happens with that. Um, if not, Jane wants me to speak at the airport. I am? Okay. okay. So apparently I'm speaking at the airport that day at 11. So depending on the traffic and the gridlock, um, once I'm down there, yeah, if I can get up on the... Yeah, <laughs> okay, I'll get a bus ride from the airport down to the square to maybe capture that. Yeah, yeah, we gotta go. So maybe I could get an escort down there, or maybe we could see how much, uh, how many people's at the airport. That might be the perfect spot if there's a great big group of people up there, and if you gotta speak up there in front of a bunch, we could we could do something there, and I could do a do something right there with a the time lapse too with all the people. I like to have the story involved with the photo because you're going to shoot this, the only thing that's going to be in the frame is the sun with this deal and, and I don't know, maybe even 600 millimeter might be too much. It, I might have to back it off to 400 to get the, the chromosphere coming off and all the solar winds and everything that we're going to see. Um, but that's all that's going to be in the shot so that's why I was kind of thinking to tell more of the story about what's going on and all the people together. Why not shoot a wide angle um, time lapse and maybe have you know thousands of people in the square or at the airport or whatever it is and and uh, and try to do that to promote Holton a little bit and as well. They know something will go down, you know, they'll be archived forever. So Chris, is there a possibility that the people down in the square are not going to be able to see it? If uh, I've got to go down there and, and check it out, and I'm wondering if you're up towards the, uh, the French block, is the sun going to be up above the buildings on the left? So, in the, so we should be good even on this end of the square. So we'd be, we'd be good then. Yeah. So that'd be cool. That'd be cool. So we should be able to see it there. Yep. Yep. As long as you've got a clear path to the, to the sun, we should be pretty good. You can use um, websites too, like uh, Stellarium. And I use that a lot when I'm planning some of my Milky Way stuff. And you can, it knows right where you are, your location. You can put the time, the date in and pause it. And it'll show you exactly what's in the sky and when and what time. And that Stellarium.com. Uh, they have an app, yeah. And it's an actual website where you can go right on your computer and you can uh, move the sky around and look all over the place. And I do a lot of that with my astrophotography to figure out where it's going to be in the sky and whatnot. And then uh, usually photo pills I use to uh, when I actually go on location. And if I see a tree, I can actually, the Milky Way is right there at a the certain time. It puts it right in and overlays it so I can mess around and see, you know, you always get the good shot where the tree's right in the perfect position. So, you know, you do this stuff for like two weeks prior to the event and then you get there and all your research done and it rains. <laughs> and then you can't do it and you got to wait for a new, but it's not going to happen on the 8th. We're not going to do that. That's right. I thought you were just lucky when you got Some of them I'm lucky. Any shot that I pull off at night is luck because there's either no animals that's uh, that's bothered me or it's been a clear night. And last year was was hired on it because we had the uh, the wildfire smelt in the uh, every time we had a clear night the high pressure system would drag the smoke in and at night I got a I got a star tracker that I set up and you get all polar aligned and you can't take a two minute long exposure because everything's just washed out with the smoke so it was it was tough to do it last year so we'll see hopefully this year we'll have better luck with the uh, with the star tracker and uh, we'll try it so, to the point about the Yep, Sky Guide too, I'm not sure. Yeah, Sky Guide is a good one. Yep. And then the nice thing about that is you can blow it up. Yes. The sky, so you can see what's grounded. Yep. See what ought to be there. Show you constellations. And it'll, yeah, it'll show you what the constellations are. Mm -hmm. and yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's really nice. It's handy. Yeah, you can plan a lot of stuff with it. But yeah, it should be fun. I can't wait. It's uh, clear skies, and we should be pretty good. Yes, <laughs> it does. A lot of people don't realize that when you go out at night. You know, up here, there's we're in like a Bortle Four, and you know, it's it's pretty dark. You get just just outside of the city lights, 
you can see a lot of stuff once your eyes get adjusted and it's it's pretty amazing all the satellites that go over that you can see and and then once in a while you get treated with you know northern lights and meteors and, and all kinds of cool stuff